sports fans here we are again well, now we are uh, we got the crank in we have the crank torqued and we're in the process of uh, doing uh, Weisco piston rings which uh, my guess is they're Nippon they're made in Japan uh, love Weisco Japan. Put, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> and um, <clears throat> the Weisco recommendation is four and a half thousandths per inch of board. So in order not to split hairs, we're going to call this four inches. It's four plus 30. Uh, four times four and a half is zero one eight. In any case, the factory recommendation on a stock Ford is 10 to 20. I, I kind of like my ring gaps near the minimum. And the reason is that the gap is the place where the combustion gas can escape. And it goes past the end gap, and then it hits the second ring and has to travel around there and get past it and then past the oil ring and into the oil and the crankcase it goes. This is called blow-by. As an engine ages, the ring end gap grows by the factor of pi. Pi is approximately, call it three. So if the cylinder wears a thousandth of an inch, multiply that times pi. The gap grows to three thousandths. So my uh, thinking is that if you stick with near the minimum at the factory end, which is uh, ten thousandths, we're gonna go about 12 to 14 on the top one and 15 to 16 on the second ring. The reason you make the second ring bigger is to avoid ring flutter. You have to remember that the combustion gas comes down from the piston, hits the top of the ring, and then goes behind it and pushes it out to, to seal even better. So that's the, basic, uh, the basics of piston ring capping. Sports fans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you got them. You got your hillbilly uh, ring <coughs> ring push yeah, tool my, there. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my piston ring pusher is an old piston. This happens to be 20 over. And what you do is you take the ring. Now this one here, there's an N on it. The N goes to the top. You can see it very small there. That N. That means Napier or whatever it means. Any, in any case, you put the end to the top. Now, you, you, we have a little machine here that, that does our rings. It's a, 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 a ring fire. Well, we'll show you that in a yeah, second. Yeah, we'll show you that in a second. Anyway, you push these in like so. You got to be you careful. You can see they're not square. Yeah, yeah you have to remember. Napier is fragile. You don't want to break them. You got to be real right, careful. you do. So then you take your, your piston and you put it, of course, the tops here. The, this one's down farther, so you even the pressure and you push. The wrist pins, you just stick two wrist pins in and that makes a nice uh, uh, ring push. So there you can see the ring is in the bore. It's nice and square. And you can see that little gap there. Then you take a feeler gauge, this is 10 thousandths. Now you can see 10 doesn't quite fit in all the way. Now, the secret to this is to try and and um, make them as square as possible. This is 10, so we're gonna go a little more on this one. So what you do is you take them out, you grab the two top ends here, you pivot it, take them out, you keep the end up, you come over to your little ring filer, and you put the ring down like this. The rotation is, there's an arrow here for the rotation, so you crank it like so. Why do you have to go a certain way? We have to go a certain way because if you go the wrong way, the ring is going to pull away from the cutter. You don't want that. These two pegs here uh, stabilize the ring. So you're cranking this direction that pushes the ring this way against the two pegs. And the only thing it's kind of a pain in the ass to squeeze the ring together because these are skinny. But anyway, you push it together, put some pressure on it, and you crank. So you try and keep them square so they're against these pins. You don't, go, you don't go too crazy. Then you take a stone because there's going to be a little edge 
here, here, and here on three sides, there'll be an edge. So you take the stone and you just give it a little crank job here on this face, here, here, and then flip it over. Then do the same thing here. And that's pretty much it. If you feel something in the back, do the back too. It won't hurt you. So you're taking the burr off the ring. That way, you know, just clean with your fingers. Make sure you got the end up. There's the end. And you do the same thing. You stick it in the ring, in the bore, not the ring. This is the ring. Moving and your then you butt them together, push them in. I see if, you, if, you're, uh, if your machinist did the job right, he put a chamfer on the top. You see that little edge there? It's like 45 degrees. I'll put the light. Where's the light? Where's the light? Uh, there's the light. And you see that little chamfer? And when you go to put the piston in the rings in, we'll show you that later. The chamfer makes it so the ring does not hang up. Yeah, because you'll break push the, you'll you don't break want to break these. You don't want to break. Anyway, here we go with this one. Push this down, all the way down. And there you can see our gap. Now I'm thinking 10 is going to fit in there pretty easy. There's 10. Okay, 10, 10 fits in. So let's go to 12. There's 12. All right, 12 fits in. We're getting pretty close on this one. Let's go to four. There's there's 13. Let's try 13. 13 fits. Looks like we're at 14. Well, this one here is done. Uh, 8, 10. Excuse me, I've got butterfingers here. Okay, 14. There's 14. 14 is fitting tight. So this is 13 to 14. Glasses oh. fell off. <laughs> uh, Hillbilly. And that's it. This this one here, we got the top ring done. Now we have to still do uh, number one. This is number two cylinder here. Uh, let's see. 1310, let's see where we are here. I think this one's small. It is. Yeah, it's a little more than 10. Maybe it's uh, 15, 10, 12. Let's try 12. 12 just barely goes in. You can see it doesn't go all the way to the to the cylinder there. So we're going to give this one a little crank and it sh should be right there. All right, so basically we're going to continue with this and then... Uh, yeah, we're going to continue with this. Uh, the top ring and the second ring, same procedure. Uh, the the uh, oil ring, you only have to do the rails. And, you, and the minimum is 10,000 on them. If you have 12 or 15,000, you're good. Because that's the third ring down. It receives less heat and a lot more oil because it's the third ring. And you don't have to worry about it so much. But the top two rings are going to hit the majority of the pressure and the heat. So you have to have them on the money. All right. That's pretty much it. Well, we'll continue doing this, and uh, the next step will be fitting the rings to the pistons, and I imagine then we'll fit the uh, pistons to the rods. we got to make sure the piston to rod orientation is correct, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. All right, guys, we'll be back.